to different people, which is good. So I want to thank a few people. First, thanks to Naira and this unnamed individual who did a ton of work to make this happen. Thank you so much to Lech Kowalski, who's right here, traveling all the way from Poland to the world. This is the fourth screening. This is the fourth screening in the U.S. So, Lech, do you want to say hello? Come here, sir. That's in Polish. Thanks for coming. It's really good. It's the first time I've had a screening in the church ever. So it's great. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's a sacred subject. And I think it is for everybody because it's about sort of the, the end, the end possible, the end possibilities for our land. You know, our land is very special and very important. That's why the farmers in Poland are important to me because they really have connected to the land. It's like many generations of people have been fighting for the land. And now, I was there a, few, a while ago and shooting another one. And that's what we discovered the fracking. And now the farmers, that's how all the other farmers have to deal with the uh, energy companies. So they are very good. All right, so I've got a few more thank yous. I have to tell you where the bathrooms are. That's the most important thing of this entire getting up, doing all the media work. Um, thank you so much to Pastor Sue Davis. If you want to wave and say hello. Really, really strong ally. She's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much to Terry Burke for doing a phenomenal job with our audio and video stuff. Uh, thank you now until it all goes south. Hopefully, it'll be good. Yeah. Um, thank you all for coming out on a Friday night and spending it with me and enjoying this film. Um, so, this film is about to be shown to the European Parliament. Uh, like has done a phenomenal job in Europe. Two million people have seen it in France and Europe. It's great. It, it, it's got great reviews. It's really fantastic. Uh, and this is the fourth screen in the U.S., the fourth in here in the U.S. So, I'm going to let this film speak for itself. So, I'm going to shut my mouth and I'll talk to you in about an hour and a half. Thank you, everyone, for being here.
people have questions. That, that's probably better for me. I want to get uh, questions for like as soon as we can. Um, so the other thing on that back to school, almost every township locally has local efforts working to ban fracking on the municipal level. I have most of the local petitions on the back table there. Uh, the last thing, two more things. Uh, there's another screening in Montrose if people are interested in making it. That's Tuesday the 16th. Down in, uh, it's the theater on State Street. Here, where's the theater in Montrose? Public Avenue. Public Ave. Public Ave in Montrose, PA. This is Tuesday. Um, the last thing I want to mention, this coming Saturday, Saturday tomorrow, we're having a potluck, an anti-fracking potluck, just to get together, enjoy each other's company uh, in the midst of all the hard work that we do. So uh, that's tomorrow, 1 p.m. at the Unitarian Universalist Church. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, with that, I want to start taking questions. Does anyone have any? All right. And Tim, do you think I have a wireless one? Sure. I got one right here. Uh, the, the polls seem to catch on real fast. Are you trying to tell us that the polls are smarter than the Americans? <laughs> but you know, it's really interesting if you watch what if you, if you really look at what happened with your own eyes. Pennsylvania was bush elect by the energy companies. Pennsylvania had no choice. You know, I did a few, uh, the people of Pennsylvania had no choice because they signed all these leases and all these deals and they used to move here. But they had no idea what this kind of thing was all about. I did an interview uh, a few weeks ago, you know, and the other day, I'm excuse my voice. And a man called in and he says, oh, you know, New York State, I want to know, hurry up and you know, make a decision that you either do it or not do it. Because in Pennsylvania, they're doing it, they're making all this money. And this guy was like getting very upset. And I said to him, you know what? Are you for fighting the Israel? I'm for fighting. They should do it, but they should at least do it quickly because they're wasting lots of money on this. And I this guy, oh look, I bet you people living in Pennsylvania right now, a lot of people there are patiently really contesting with their eyes. And that's really very important for our contesting systems and not trust what these companies are saying. I mean, one of the issues around this film, which I think is really important, is bigger than fracking. The issue is that corporations are destroying our, our, our society. And we have to really understand that, and that's what the Polish people really understand, is that they were not waiting for the government to come and say, well, how about this or that? They just went off and did what they did, because it's obvious there's a problem. And we know that if their area is really, you know, designated, Area of they can do manufacturing, industrial, and work on. That will be for the long run. And you're looking at people that are generations and generations old living on these farms, so they have on this land. So they have a very deep connection to the land. And that connection gives them the spirit. It's a spiritual, they're in a spiritual condition to fight. It's, 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 it's very strong. The, the land is more important to them than anything else. But Without the land, they have no identity, and that's why you, you see this film. But suppose Chevron and Shell had spread the money around like they did in Pennsylvania and New York State and buy people off, you know, they are doing it property by property. They are doing it there. They are doing it there. I mean, the communities are split there. You know, people are not talking to each other. You know, this is, the, the thing is that the, the Polish government is officially for fracking, as is the Polish, as is the church there. And you know, I spoke to a lot of priests because priests are the religion is important. Not one priest wanted to talk about this issue. And then they said, well, you can go above me, you can go above me. So I spoke to a priest who was up high and said, you know what you're going to do? Is you have to go to the Vatican. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is that? You know, what's the Vatican work for? <laughs> so the Not Poles, for the, people. the Poles, they organized very quickly. And of course, they had the American situation to look at. But what else would you say? They, they seemed to band together very quick. They, well, I mean, what they, they had they, a regard for the land. They, you know, I, you know, we live in modern reality right now. You have to understand that this generation of farmers in Poland is very well educated. They've gone to universities to study agricultural issues. The internet, you know, there's things that are bad about the internet, and there's things that are good about the internet. But the thing about the internet is that it is, you know, like the media in Poland is, is, is totally compromised by money, by big uh, 
uh, big money and by the government and by a lot of uh, special, a lot of special interests, just like the media is compromised here. So if you read the paper in Utica or in, in Albany, in the many places I've read the paper, there's so many you, you, you cannot read the truth because it's, it's, you know the Connect News Service is owned by a company that's very far away. You don't even read the real news that's going on in the neighborhood. The media is sold as it is secure as it is important. So these people, they went to the internet, they started learning about it, they started sending each other information. And the interesting thing is that most of the information that they had was from Pennsylvania, but it was in English. And slowly people started translating it, and, and, and it sort of started building. But it, you know, it's, it's a lot that we're doing, and, so the, and the words started getting around. And Pennsylvania really was the thing that we're looking at the most, and we're looking about at, at situations there, and we're learning from what's going on in Pennsylvania. If it wasn't for Pennsylvania, this probably wouldn't have had to happen because that's where they got most of the information. So unfortunately, the way that I see it, you know, Pennsylvania is kind of finished already. But Pennsylvania is, is an amazing lesson for the rest of the world, as it is here in New York State. People always refer to Pennsylvania. So this is how things work. I just wanted to say that Ray is here. He's in the film, and I just would like to come up here. Who's been screwed over? Here he is, a very happy king. Yeah. You were in Utica a few weeks ago, and we had an amazing turnout with 350 people there. So people want to see this kind of alternative information. Can you say a few words? How you doing, everybody? From Pennsylvania, for example. Yeah, right. This is the well water out of my house. This is taken out. This water now has turned 10 times worse since Thanksgiving time last year. The DEP permitted the uh, nine mile moratorium in WT lifted for the seven wells that never cracked. They came back in and cracked three of the wells, and the water has turned dramatically worse than what it is right here. It is so bad now, and you can't even, you can't even run it inside the home. Uh, last time they came and tested it, they were outside with uh, number two hazmat suits, gloves, and masks on to test the water. Okay. You could not be within 10 feet of my water well water. How many people live in there and how many people would you say at this spot? Everybody went from Carter Road, came right out down Carter Road, down to my house, and five houses down past all the way down to the Teal Bar. Um, a lot of them speak because they signed gag orders. Uh, to get the water buffalo was in, uh, now to get the water buffalo, you have to sign a gag order that says that you will not speak out about anything that you want with your property, your water, or anything, or you will not get the water. This gag order thing is really fascinating because they're using the same techniques in Poland. Farmers or landowners who sign, sign deals, they sign a deal where they cannot, explode, they cannot disclose how much money they receive, what the issue is, what the, 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 the details of the contract are. These are intimidation techniques. And this is really fundamentally against democracy. If you sign an agreement with a big, with a big corporation and you don't have legal representation like they, like they do, and if you cannot match, you know, if you, even if you got had some money for a lawyer, they have, you know, like in a film, in uh, South America, they had 500 law firms working for them. I mean, this is extraordinary. I mean, this is how unequal things are. So this kind of uh, non disclosure agreements that are, are uh, taking they're using all over the world. And this is one, you know, in Poland they were very interested in people in all these techniques. And they were saying to each other, well, listen, there's something wrong. If I can't talk to this father or my neighbor about his contract, and I've been talking to him and his parents and his grandparents about what's going on, but I can't talk about his contract, but there's something strange here. It's, it's, it's not right. I mean, these are the people who fought against Germans, against the Nazis, and against the Russians, the, the Soviets. So, you know, for them, a contract is like, oh, you know, it's not such a big deal. You know, because they, they have died for this life. But now they can't talk to each other because of the contracts they're signing. And well, this, what, is, what this is extraordinary. Can you wait right there? If you want to speak, can you put your hand up? And we're going to have Jim here who's going to come to you with a microphone. Yeah, so it's my understanding that most Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got somebody on the mic. Put your hand up. And we'll question, a question about Poland. Um, are you in a split of state situation where the government gets, gets the gas or do, they, do, the, do the landowners stand to get royalties? That's a very good question. This is a fundamental difference between Europe and America. 
in Europe, the, the land, you need, the company needs permission from the, from the farmer or from the landowner to go on the land. But what is underground belongs to the state. So Chevron and other energy companies, they made a deal with the state and they paid millions of dollars for the mineral rights that, that, that are under, uh, underground. Not only for shale gas, because there's other minerals there. They made a deal for that. So the farmers get a, they get a token amount for, to allow this company to go on their land. But the mineral rights are owned by the government, and the government is really pro shale gas and other mineral uh, situations because these, they, they stand a lot of money for that. And of course, the government is corrupt, like it is everywhere else in the world. So the government is very heavily for shale gas exploration. And that's the biggest difference. So at the same time, the, the mechanism of the government is complicated, so they have more time there because there are some people in the government who are against it, but they have more time there to slow these companies down. Now in France, there's a moratorium completely against shale gas mining because they have the same kind of situation there. The mineral rights are owned by the state. The government and the people in power don't want that, uh, the, the, the shale gas operations to start, but there's pressure on them, all kinds of pressure for them to change. So we'll see what happens. But right as of now, there's a moratorium. Now the other thing that's really important to understand this is why I came to New York to show this film by myself independently because I wanted to meet the people here. And I've been doing this, I applied to this for the rest of April. The, the important thing to understand is that New York State is very important. And I'll tell you why. New York State is a, is a powerful state, you know, in, in, in the context of the rest of the world. You've got New York City, it's a, it's a very, you know, economically powerful state. There's a moratorium here, and then the whole world, you know, places where there's, you know, there's potential fracking going on, or will be going on, is looking at New York because there is a moratorium. New York is an example of it being stopped. And people are looking at New York. If New York goes down, chances are a lot of countries will then agree for the fracking. And that's how powerful the issue is. Because New York, they, the people will say, well, New York has all these educated people, government is progressive, etc., etc. If New York State goes down, there might be a good possibility of Poland will follow, etc., etc. Not only is New York amazingly critical, but the southern tier of New York is that much more so because we are sitting upon the most profitable portion of the ship. So visible resistance from this area is incredibly critical. The other thing you need to think about too is like down in Denmark, okay? The gas industry has literally turned neighbor against neighbor, town against town, community against community. It is a little completely war zone where your neighbors that you've helped for years and talked to now throw the rocks at you, slash your tires, and anything they can do to try to get rid of you and to shut you off because you will not shut up. And all I care about tell is everybody up here, keep fighting. Don't let them start drilling in New York because it starts right from the drilling process the concrete failing, to the casing failing, the fracking makes it worse, and this is how the groundwater gets contaminated. I drove the truck three years. I ran for Shell, I ran for Chesapeake, I ran for Rogers, Crusoe's, Williams, and I've been on stones, and I also been in lines up with the capsites, and they didn't know I was there. And they didn't like it. But the process is the same. It doesn't matter the name of the company, it's the same practice. Screw the landowner. You know, you know what, what he said is really interesting because, you know, as I was filming this, uh, this story, um, one thing I discovered was that anytime I went to the authorities, you know, to the company, corporations, or scientists who supposedly know something about this, they were always very evasive about what's going on. And you, you never knew exactly what was going on. There's only so much you can learn out of the internet. And I was lucky to find Ray because he worked it for the man. And, and without getting this kind of information from this kind of person, it's very hard to get this. It's the truth. And that's why Ray is really important because he, he's not afraid to, to, to say that I work for them. This is what happened. Y'all know what blowback is? Yeah. You know what produced water is? It's the same thing. Do you know what prime water is? You do. What do you think prime water is? It's, it's, it's got all the salt and as well as all the radioactivity and everything. So. Not with the gas company, it's not. We take the flow back of produced water 
doesn't matter what site it depends what site you're on, is what they're going to call it. It's a good for call that. We will load our properties into a truck. We will take it to a tank farm. We will run to a five stop filter, like a big coffee filter. We run to that filter and we pump it across the other side of the tank farm. And these nice tanks we have over here now say, the wine and the water. And then we take it back to the site. Brian, order for the gas industry is the blowback and the produce water from the fracking. That's what Brian order is for the gas industry. Do you, do you mean it's, it's the produced water minus the TDX? No, that is running through a soft filter to get the dirt out of it. It's minus the total soft solids. Right, right. Okay, it's still the blowback produced water. And this is what we will put on the roads. We were going out with our trucks, fresh water trucks, would half grind, half flow back, putting sprayers on the fresh water trucks, and we're spraying the dirt roads, and the roads were dust control. And now this is what they want to start doing. Get the local brine water from the gas industry and start treating the roads for the winter time. Question. Yes. Oh,
I would like to know where that cemetery is. Is it in Mountain Valley? No, the cemetery that was there, Newton. It's, it's, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. it's Brooklyn. Well, I feel for them because in Mountain Valley, where our compressor station is, and oh, yeah. many gas grow wells, is my, one of my family's cemeteries. I have a great, great grandparents and many other ancestors buried there, and I weep for those people. Well, to answer your question about that compressor station, this is Fred Jennings, which happens to be in the sewer authority, and he's also one of the borough members. Oh, there, by you. Oh, I know that, man. <laughs> He's the brain. Thank you for being in the film. I've, I've watched them building that last summer. Uh, I believe um, that my mom died. They had the lights on up there beginning of February. Yes. And about what, the 20th, they stopped. They turned the lights off. And we stopped seeing them right back. This compressor is going to be sending everything down that valley into Halston, across the valley, and into Great Bay. Yes. And nobody realizes it. They literally snuck this one up the end of a dirt road, off a dirt road, off another dirt road, dead end. There's only a couple houses they even drive by. <laughs> There's a cemetery there. And everybody up there. Also worries, well, there's a cemetery in the movie compression station. Here's another thing Maple Ridge Cemetery in Jackson Township, Southwestern's building their compression station for the Constitution Pipeline right up behind that. I got to bury my mother there here later this month. Hmm. And they're building that compression station there. My prayers are with you. I would ask that everyone here from New York State at least get 10 more people on your side because it's a vicious, vicious war. And can I, I want to just add one thing really quick about compressors, and that's that they're actually regulated through, they're regulated federally. We're fighting them in New York right now. There are people who are getting sick from compressor stations in New York right now as we speak, and it's a tough battle because the FERC is the agency, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, they exist to represent things and push and track this infrastructure forward. You are too, FERC, federally. No, we're not. We are not. All the compressor stations in Pennsylvania are self-regulated by the gas industry. Right, but yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all. Can you use this? I want to point something out that's very interesting. These two gentlemen who are in the film are both uh, veterans. And I find this really uh, very amazing because you know people sort of look at the, you know veterans as people who are not involved, but here are two men who are leaders in the fight, who are not afraid to fight. They're both veterans. And, you know, they, they've entered the second fight of their lives. I just want to say thank you because. Uh, uh, Does the uh, FDA uh, test the milk that comes from all these farms where um, the you know, fracking takes place under the, the uh, their farms? Because I think you know we're harming our children if it's not tested. I want to. Boycott milk and milk products to get some more attention. Uh, Pennsylvania, they have certain testing, the state agriculture uh, department does, and they don't test for this stuff. Mm -mm. <laughs> does it look clean? Oh, okay. Mm. Is what's in it? All right. And it's very short. Generally, they're looking for bacteria, they're not looking. And I, I, their bacteria antibiotics, that's not really, they're not looking for uranium, they're not looking for barium, they're not looking for any of that. Well, I'm old enough to remember the beef boycott back in the 70s, and it was very powerful. So maybe if we started boycotting milk and milk products and yogurts and things like that, we would have a little more power in this fight. Well, throw cheese in the process. And cheese. <laughs> 
How many of those water buffaloes and pumps have failed in the winter? Uh, several of the uh, buffaloes have failed. You know, where there's somebody, you know, they didn't have the money to run the electric, extra electric to feed them, and they failed a lot of electricity. Um, as property value goes, I can't speak for everybody else, I can only speak for my own, you know, my own property. Um, I'm one of the only piece of the property there. It's a um, residential commercial because I do have a repair project, I'm telling you. Well, you used to have those pump lap all the red brake vehicles to work on. So, um, except I got to do true blues that still come to get work done. Um, but it was back in 05, I was getting ready when, well, of course, all this stuff was going on with my refinance, and I was thinking about it. And I had a property. You know, someone was on the loan, and they came down and they appraised my property, and they appraised it out at 425. That's what they appraised my property for. My property is now worth zero. Because you cannot sell it, because you do not have water. And to sell a home, you have to have sewer, power, and water. And I do not have water. My well man has been down here and punched 18 temporary holes in to see if you find anything. There's no usable water on my property. Mm -hmm. To sell my property, I literally have to knock the house down and sell it as a vacant land. Mm -hmm. I spent five years building this house myself. Mm -hmm. My floors were 50 years old, my hardwood floors are, because I took them out of the houses, they were getting ready to tear down, and I reclaimed all the hardwood floors and brought them in and rebuilt them and put them in my house. I spent years of doing this, and now it's worth zero. Every day, I got to up, make sure the buffalo's are right. Once a week, I have to put a filter in because of the clock up. That's $10 for a filter. Going to winter, you know, 150 to $200 a month. Those electric like heaters running out there that nobody wants to pay for. So it, it just, you know, and that's, you got to remember two of these buffaloes. You can't drink that one. That's strictly non potable water. But now we've got to go out and find bottled water for your coffee. Drink to cook with, brush your teeth. Because the bumpers, some of the chemicals, the plastic, releases into the water, and it's not meant for human consumption. So you cannot use the bumpers to drink out of it. Uh, I would like to know what has been the reaction to the, of the Polish government to your film? Uh, pro, con, the persona non grata down there now? What's happening? It's a good question. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. We are having a very difficult time getting the film uh, purchased or shown in my Polish television. So now we're waiting for a film festival in Poland to show the film. And then after that, I plan to do a tour all around Poland showing it and showing it here. But the official media is uh, the film is blackballed. Now, there, is, there might be a possibility that we'll get on one channel that is not official, but it's, it's, not, it's a small channel. But the official word in Poland is that the pro fracking show things that are against fracking. There's very little media information that's against fracking shown on public television. Uh, a year, two years ago, something was shown. It was a, kind of an exploitation kind of the Fox News kind of show where they show what's going on and they expose a few things. It was the last program that was on major television in, in Poland. So there's a real problem with, with the media because in Poland, the, the media is controlled by the government. They, they, they own the only station, the, the stations. And give them money for the programming to the stations. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But the thing is that now, see the films are shown in Germany, in France, and it will be shown in Switzerland and a few other countries. And now the film is going to film festivals. And the, the plan is to create enough stink. Poland will demand to see the film, and this will happen. But it will take a little time. Uh, by the end of the year, I'm sure uh, it will have uh, some kind of uh, strength in Poland. But right now, it's difficult. What did the media cover? Wait for the mic, please. Um, I think I must be very naive, but I'm going to ask this question anyway. Where are the governmental agencies that we pay to protect us? <laughs> okay, just let me ask a question. The Department of Health. <laughs> Department of Environmental Conservation and so forth and so on. What's what's happening? I just want to take one moment. This is Pastor Sue Davis. Everyone give her a very big round of applause. So I've got two people 
jostling over the mic, we're both bigger than me. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I can do it too. You don't remember that anymore. <laughs> I think that this question is a hard matter. This question is hard. I can also answer though, because I've been contacted the uh, Department of Health and Conservation oh, in Pennsylvania, and they basically can do nothing. They have no power, and they call them, we report things, and they do nothing for us. We are helpless in the hands of the industry, which has taken over Susquehanna County and 39 other counties in Pennsylvania. So they do nothing for us. Hold on, Spade. Okay, thanks. Now, for DDP, John Hanger was the secretary of DDP for Pennsylvania. He stood in a church, something like this in Dominica, promised to lost all the water line and fresh water to affected houses on Dominica. Swore up and down that he was going to sue Cabot. The line is going to go through. This is a done deal. He stood there with paper in his hand that was signed twice by Cabot Gas and Oil, stating that they contaminated the water. The CEO and their attorneys signed this paper. Within probably three days of that meeting and the media being there, he pulled out the water line went south. Oh, and John Hanger. He now works for the gas industry. Oh. The spokesperson for WPX, which is Williams, is also an ex DEP employee of the state of Pennsylvania who went to work for the gas industry because they all sit in government office, wheeling and dealing all behind our backs. We're just stupid little people. We're just dumb hicks that don't know any better. This, I mean, what is happening, what he just described is happening in Poland. Let me give you an example. In the film, you saw a scene where he was meeting with the, the, the two men from Chevron. Uh, and the man from Chevron is the head of Chevron in Poland. At that meeting, there was, another, there was a woman there representing the government, the governor, the local uh, governor's office. And she was there to sort of mediate and, and try to get information for the government. Six months later, that woman was working for Chevron, and she's working for Chevron right now. So it's the same thing. And that woman was, even then, when she was in that meeting, she was acting a little strange, not very forthright. So these companies have ways of buying the government, and one way is to get people who work for the government to work for them, and vice versa. And this keeps going on. I mean, this is, this is nothing new in America. It's been going on for a long time. I'm not sure that you know more about it than I do. Just real quick, it's such a common thing. There's a name, there's a website that logs this stuff. It's called Revolving Door. Or, or something to that effect, Google it, I'm sure you can find it, and basically, it's a revolving door between industry and government, so. Now, with the DEP, one of the issues is, depending on who's calling, they hang up. <laughs> That's not a joke. If you're calling your problem person, they're gonna hang up on you. Even if you have a valid issue, like, one of the streams flowing in the Snake Creek turning green last week, oh, or this, yeah, it's this week. And uh, tomorrow's the first day of drug season in PA, and we got a green stream. Um, yeah, they stocked the trout April 8th in there right before it turned green. The health department. Well, Susquehanna County is a second class. Actually, it's a sixth class county of eight different classes. And it's operated under the second class county code. They don't have to have a health department. We have an office of the state health department. They have a couple of rooms that they have an annex across from the courthouse. I'm not sure if that's one of the ones slated to be closed where a bunch of counties will share one office in one of the counties. Um, health department will do anything. They don't have the funds to do that. Yeah. There is, I, I think this is, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I know is that New York City has reservoirs in upstate there in Kansas. And it's against, there, there is, there's a laws that they cannot frack on those lands. Now, if they can't frack because this, this wells are feeding New York City, does that mean people in this area are anything less 
Yeah. This, yeah. this yeah. means that they, they know that fracking is bad because it's illegal to frack on our mineral reservoir from New York City. So there's, this picture is very, very obvious if we said that once. And who here knows that Berman Tidal County sit on what's called the sole source aquifer? Does anyone, does anyone know that? So we got a few extremely informed people in the room. So what that means, it's called the, the Clinton Street Ballpark, Ballpark Aquifer. And basically what, it, what that means is everyone in Berman Tidal County are dependent on this entire system and the integrity of this entire hydrologic system. It's something that's actually very unique and no one knows about it. So uh, that's one thing that I'm working on getting word out about because it's this incredibly fragile system that's, that's in absolute peril. So I really would raise God like something really brief to add because I want to take some more questions. You know, like I said, as far as the federal government goes, we had EPA in the and you all realized back on the 22nd of July, EPA went national on the news, newspapers and itself, said there's nothing wrong with it or whatever it would take. On July 23rd, the day after they wrote a report, put it in the UPS packet, sent it to me on the 25th, tell me not to use my water. It's contaminated. Don't drink it or bathe in it. This is our federal government. They will lie to you. Your government will lie to you. Local officials will lie to you. It's all about the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. Real quick, Just remember with 9 uh, 11, the World Trade Centers, the EPA came out, the New York State came out, says, Oh, the air is safe to breathe around the air. I'm telling you right now, 5% of the air samples in and around Manhattan that were taken. We're above a level deemed safe to breathe for asbestos. 25% mm. of the dust samples take in buildings in and around that area tested positive for asbestos. Do you believe what the EPA says? Mm -hmm. I got documented proof that says you can't trust them. If I did that in school, I would go to jail for 20 years, or 5 to 20. $250,000 fine. <laughs> Go figure. The aquifer doesn't conveniently stop at the border. This, so, my understanding is that because Susquehanna and private towns are so thinly populated that the federal government has not matched those counties for their agriculture. So for all we know, let me terrify you all here right now, our room, our Clinton um, Street Welfare Aquifer could already be contaminated from the drilling group in um, Susquehanna and um, counties. I saw that back there. Who? Okay, so I want to get it right. Okay, so hold on one second. I want to try to take a quick stack here so we can kind of keep track. So I've got uh, Ed, I've got Bill, I've got this gentleman, and Vera. So that's four. We'll work through those and then we'll keep moving forward. So Ed? Uh, yes, I just wanted to make a, kind of a historical comment along with a question. Uh, when I saw the film, I was also curious as to why is it that you know this group of Polish farmers seem to organize so quickly and historically the Poles have a, a history of resisting authority and questioning authority. The country didn't exist for over hundred years. It was recreated and they fought the Germans and they fought the Russians up until very frequently or uh, recently. And then Polish farmers in particular were able to resist um, collectivization. They were one of the few countries in, in Eastern Europe where most of the, the land was privately owned, which was quite an accomplishment. Uh, so my question is, uh, what's the current situation in this village that you focused on in Poland? Well, this, this was, there was a, villages in Poland are located very close to each other, sometimes a kilometer, two kilometers away. It's, it's a small country. It's uh, about the size of France. It's smaller than France. There's uh, almost 40 million people. So it's not a huge country. Anyways, 
The village not far away was the first place in Poland where they stopped Chevron. This was the second place where they shot and stopped Chevron. And there's a village not far away where Chevron is now trying to build another well. We know that the people are against it, they're trying to fight it. Uh, there is a village about uh, like roughly 10 miles away where Chevron just built their first well in Poland. So uh, that's what's going on. So this is an active fight. And these people, Pasha, the people that you saw on the film, travel from village to village and they try to help or stimulate some kind of discussion to get people up against these wells. The problem is that this, these are farmers and they have to work, so they have, only have so much time, and this is a big issue. You know, when a, a small farmer like that wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and the farmers here will know that, and until it's dark, they're working all day, they have a lot of work to do on their land, so they have to stop doing that to fight Shadow. So this created a lot of tension in the families, and with the husband and wife and the children, and this is something they have to deal with. So they're trying to find ways to organize their time where one person will go one day, another person will go another day to a place and try to help. <clears throat> but it's an active fight. And Poland, the Polish government now really wants fracking, so they're pushing for it. So, But the farmers are getting more stubborn and more stubborn, and this thing's building, and we don't know what will happen yet at, at this point. Just real quick, Bill. One thing, industry, so part of what this film did for me is it really showed me that there are patterns here. Industry works to alienate people within their own community and shut down dialogue. It's a pattern that's happening across the world. So with that, Bill's going to have a question here. Okay, this is just actually a quick comment. Um, uh, I want to caution you all, uh, whenever you hear the term aquifer, Yes, it's very important a lot of us drink water that comes out of aquifers. But there's a lot of uh, terminology in the ESCAIS and the regulations. I know some of you actually have read this stuff. Uh, sole source aquifer, uh, principal aquifer, primary aquifer, all of these terms are, are being used in order to decide these places are, are, are sacrosanct and these other places are to be sacrificed. So I would caution you, if you protect your aquifer, but you don't protect your watershed, you're in deep trouble because the watershed is what charges the aquifer. So protect your watershed and forget about aquifer protection. And he builds slowly right on that there. It's a, it's a very nuanced thing, and I'm, I'm not a geologist who's qualified to speak on this. So who did we have now? I'm a little conflicted about which of the six questions I have to uh, ask. Choose one. All right. Um, a combo. Well, the most important one to me is what's your last name, right? Kelly. Kelly? Campbell. Campbell. Can you talk to the mic? I can. I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watershed. Doesn't NIRAD have a, a little bit of uh, uh, learning to do then? Raising the uh, aquifer protection that just came through in the county in New York State, and they were raising how good the aquifer. It seems as if they. I'm just curious. Is, is there a, is there a misunderstanding among the people who are against this? No. I can I can try to fill that. I, mean, I think so. that I think that there is some confusion because no one has seen the state's regulations for a year and a half now. So I think that that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Well, in one sense, I'm just saying that we hear praise of the aquifer protection, and then we hear it's not enough at the same time from the same people. Aquifer, so it's kind of confusing. confusing. When you hear principal aquifer and primary aquifer, a, a, a principal aquifer is an aquifer that gives water to a large body of people. Therefore, it should be protected. A, a primary aquifer, I was getting confused because they're so similar. But the other one is rural water, and there are no protections in the regulations for, for principal aquifers. There's only protections for primary aquifers, and the protections for the primary aquifers are inadequate because you have to consider the entire watershed. And it's like the uh, uh, left brought up the, 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 uh, the New York City watersheds. There are 4,000 so protections around, around the New York City watershed. If every, and notice they didn't use the term aquifer, they used the term watershed. If every watershed, if every citizen of New York's watershed got a 4,000 foot buffer, there would be a state ban on fracking. Okay, no so, Bill, thank you. I want to let Brett speak because he actually has a bit more knowledge about this. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, one of the things, uh, there was a report, USGS, they started last year, it was supposed to be issued in November. Uh, it was what, 2012-58, I can't remember the last two numbers, but the issuance date was February 20th. Um, it's on the watershed, it's an open file report for the watershed from the state line in Windsor along the Susquehanna River all the way up, I believe, into Shenango County. And it was determining effects. They started this back in 2009, the discussions, and looking at what drilling would do in the watershed away from the Susquehanna River. One of the issues they found out was they're going through one of these hilltops. Through the fractured rock, they're going to have problems. When they initially drill a bore, you're going to affect all the aquifers you're going through. Because when they initially drill, there's no case. Mm -hmm. um, I believe 2010, 2011, the initial casing failure rate was like 6.2%. Last year, it was over 8%. Did more wells. They had some problems. But one of the things was these aquifers, there's public drinking water sources in the Susquehanna River. They're coming from alluvial fans because they have to get a couple hundred gallons a minute. These alluvial fans are taking the runoff from the upland areas. When they drill the upland areas, there's a high effect going down, and it'll have the most level of effect on those public sources. Level of effect? Level of an effect. Level of an effect. Because it's going in, as soon as those streams hit the alluvial fan of the Susquehanna Valley, it immediately goes in. That's where they're drawing the public drinking water sources from there. Now you have your private wells all over the place, they're going to get affected. They're going to drill a well. They're going to well, get affected. Um, August of last year, we had a well drilled just inside Susquehanna County, above Halstead, mile, about a mile away from our sewer collection system. We had people calling the sewer plant saying, "Our water's turning black, and your sewer line's broken." Sewer lines were broken. Two and a half weeks later, we get a couple more calls. Other people call DEP. DEP comes down. Oh, we have water. Jeff comes down from the DEP. Yeah, we have people with black water, including one of the directors of the sewer plant. And all those people on the hillside over there, on the other side of the Susquehanna River, all their water is black too. What I didn't know until about a month and a half ago, those two water wells I had to be replaced on Route 7 a in New York. It was a bunch of wells on Route 7 a that had their water affected. They figured it might have been that well, but they didn't know what happened to us down in Great Bend and Halstead area. So, before I, I would like to take a couple more of your questions, I think this is a really good dialogue, and I really do appreciate dialogue, and I think that's what we're all here for. Does anyone else have questions so I can kind of take a stack again? So I see one, two, hold on, hold on, Jim, Jim, Jim. I'd like to, can we give you one more and then come back if there's more time at the end? Does that work? Great, thank okay, you. yeah. Um, like, I was curious of all the people who confronted you while you were filming, did anybody try to bring any legal action against you for continuing to run the camera? And how do you handle that? If they do, can you give any advice to me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's amazing because both in Poland and in the United States and Pennsylvania, whenever they went to a place where the fracking would doing something with the industry, you know, it's kind of work, they always confronted me. It was always, always a situation where they told me to leave or try to intimidate me or yell at me, call the police. One night we were shooting uh, uh, in the flaring zone area. The police came to help us for half an hour until my passport was cut. So this happens. But technically, they can't do anything. It's just intimidation. There's no 
can, I can, if I'm standing away from the, the area on the road or whatever, pointing my camera, I can do that. And technically do that both here and Poland. So they can't do anything. I was afraid when I was alone. There was a few situations I was alone in, and I was afraid just physically for myself. But, you know, uh, nothing happened. Uh, but I have been confronted in every situation and intimidated to the point where I was slightly afraid, but I never, uh, I, I knew the rules were, the laws were on my side, but they may change. Now, I used to live in Windsor, too, and uh, that's still New York, and then it, Susquehanna starts in Cooperstown, and it dips down to the Great Bend and all there in Susquehanna, and then it comes back up north of England. And that worries me. Are they throwing chemicals in Great Bend and Susquehanna into the river of the wells, and then it's big enough to drink in your dirty water? And it's a huge, it's a huge river down in New York City, if you ever go down there. It's like two miles wide. The area of, uh, the, of the Susquehanna watershed above the water intake for the city of Binghamton, it's between 11 and 12 percent of the watershed. So you're talking about 280 some odd square miles. And are they dumping stuff? I don't know. I've had nights where we had 30,000 extra gallons come in where we normally don't. We have dualies backing up to a certain what does it affect our river flow too? I mean, if they're taking all this out before it hits our Brook County. Yeah, they're drilling upstream. You got drilling in the Straka watershed, you got drilling in the Salt Lake Creek watershed. There's going to be a lot of that this year. Um, you have drilling in the Snake Creek watershed that's been going on over the last bit of two years. You have drilling in the choking up watershed, little Snake Creek watershed, every little watershed except one that goes through the Snake Bean lands, you have drilling in. Isn't it true too? We've only seen the tip of the iceberg, and it's only about 1% drill. You're going to see thousands and thousands. There's nine different layers for them to drill, not just the results. Now, they said 40 years ago, I heard it. VA was stuffing all their stuff in their sewage and it was coming up the us. Now it's supposed to be 10 times, 100 times more pollution. And now fracking fluids and stuff are coming out. Well, not only that, you have the Chesapeake Bay plan. Right. You're supposed to reduce your nitrogen and phosphorus levels. We're being punished right now in Binghamton County to clean up the rest of Well, it ain't us that's doing it. There's a formula for every acre of forest or grassland that's converted over, that you can say, well, end of 2010, 1% of Susquehanna County was already changed into well pads or roads for it. This isn't counting everything else. Well, you were saying it's and that was a USGS study that came out like, a couple weeks ago. You said it's real important to some of the deer. Well, if we're getting polluted water in our bar well, that affects Broome County a hell of a lot. You know, and even if it's 11%, what, what part of the water are you going to get? I just, in, 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 at the point of this thing, this, this issue is that I spoke with an investment firm in New York who are dealing with the investments in, in, in this industry. And the rule is that they, uh, a company must build four gas wells per day to make it profitable. In other words, they, they need to build four gas wells per day, year round, in order to make this thing work. Not all those gas wells were working at any one time, but they have to keep drilling and drilling. And so this gives you an idea of how many gas wells potentially could be built. Right now there's almost, almost 10,000 gas wells in Pennsylvania that I'm aware of. So in, in, in Poland, uh, half of Poland has to have a gas wells because each gas well is inconsistent. Sometimes it'll last for long, the hands will come off for a long time, so it's old. But the first year is the, the, the biggest amount of production. But they can't really predict how long it's going to last, what, can, what the consistency of the gas is. Uh, you know, if it's cleaner gas, probably the gas is very dirty, it needs a lot of cleaning. So all these issues are really interesting. And the only, you have to remember one thing, the only reason why the, 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 the shale gas, this fracking is happening, is because the price of oil is so high. But when the price of oil drops below a certain amount, 
Frankie is no longer profitable. So this is a big, the scam. The other thing that people don't talk about too much, and I notice this in Pennsylvania, is the pipelines. <laughs> you can't have these gas wells without pipelines. And what are these pipelines doing? They're gathering this gas and sending it to the marketplace, but they're doing something else. You know, these companies say, well, it's good for America, but now they're planning to sell this gas in Asia. So they're going to screw up the environment, screw up the water. A lot of people, you know, the, 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 the amount of money that people are making is unequal because some people make a lot of money and most people don't. And on top of that, the gas is being sold in another country and the corporation is making money from that. And one other thing that was told in Pennsylvania, which is really important, I'm not sure if it's this way in New York State, in Pennsylvania, the gas companies do not pay road taxes. When they, pay, they, they don't pay a, gas, a tax for the gas. In other words, their vehicles are considered off-road. So when they fill up trucks, to, to, and there's, they use a lot of trucks, a lot of vehicles, they don't pay tax on that gas. Now that is a really amazing thing because that money is used to fix roads, and these are big trucks and they ruin roads. Now that nobody talks about that. So they're, they're milking the system in many different ways and change the laws and regulations in their favor. And we have to really understand that, and these are all secrets. It's very hard to get this information because there's so much of it. Yeah, I just want to take Hey, road like this right out in front here with our water trucks, and we made it to a dirt road in two weeks. And if you have a four by four that's this high off the ground, you ain't going down. So I wanted, I wanted to just jump in and say one thing really quick. So I, I see that, so this gentleman, I see crack goes are one and two. So not only these corporations have a fiduciary obligation to their shareholders to turn a profit. Gas right now is fifteen dollars plus in China. Here it's roughly around three. So I want to take more questions here. Uh, so I'll take this one. Just a couple of points, and then I want to make a statement. Um, the watershed is basically anything that's going into the river. Say you go like maybe east of almost a deposit. All the every speck of rain, every drop, everything that drains off the parking lot, off the lawns, off every little tributary, it's going to the Delaware watershed. If you're west of that, it's all going to the Susquehanna, Shenandoah, Tioga, they all drain to the Susquehanna. They all go west and then they go through Pennsylvania. And we're getting a bit of taste of, of Pennsylvania's water here and the upstream. I mean, it's actually, we're downstream from Great Bend, by the way. The other thing is, like, New York City has declared that like, it, it doesn't want any kind of risk in its own watershed. What is this watershed? The watershed that's feeding those, those Casio reservoirs, the back in Cannesville. They are all going to New York City, Metro New York. There's probably at least 20 million people. We do not want to filter that water and cuss them. Ten years ago, they said it was costing them 18 billion, billion, to just filter that water. And they don't want to do it, so they, did, they thought it would be more bang for the buck to buy the land, to get easements, and to try to protect the watershed, so to protect their water. So they don't want any drilling in their water. What does that tell you? They don't trust, they do not trust fracking. But it's okay for us. It's okay for us to make a sacrifice. So do you have a good question? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to get to the point. Okay. Everything that they drill is all the water we're pumping these chemicals, these things. Like there is way below the water table. Don't worry, it's over a mile deep. Don't worry. They're fracking, they're, they're exploding all the strata everywhere up and down in that area. And they say that over 50%, and this is by the gas companies on statements, they say that 50% of the casings are going to frack, they're going to fail in 20 years. How long, how, how long do you think that we're going to be living here on this planet? They're, they're going to be planning for all that compromised strata everywhere down from over a mile deep. All this water is going to be contaminated. If this water is going to be coughing and vomiting up for 50 years, it's going to be going through every little crack. How are we going to protect the water? We can't protect it. That's why New York said, Neo, no. But we're going to be the sellers. Thank you. It's, it's like this man in the uh, film set who was the safety manager on the, on the site, and he didn't know I was filming. He said the water is going to be coming up contaminated for 25 to 50 years, and he works with it. 
He works for them, so you know, he knows what's going on. They, they know what's going on. Like uh, Craig Stevens, Sorley Township, I just wanted to thank you. Um, last Monday we went to a film, a film showing Crack Nation in Montrose, and a guy named Phil McLear, we call him Flim Flam now, but uh, he, he couldn't find one thing wrong after traveling all over the world, actually, with this. And I'm just amazed, living in the middle of it. And uh, just so people know, the question was asked earlier, who's going to help us? Our DEP also issues permits. They did 10,000 in 2011 by themselves. I calculated $75 million they raised just from uh, drilling fees for each well. Uh, I found out also talking yesterday to a senator, senator's aide here in New York State, most of their pension, a large, large portion of it, is Chesapeake stock. And if you don't know, besides Chesapeake already selling one third of my mineral rights underneath my property to Stan Oil, that's Norway. Just that China's buying the rest. So my question for you, Luck, is you, you've been around the world, you went to Poland, you've been all over this area. Where do you recommend we go for help when we get uh, our, the back turned on by our own elected officials, by our state protective agencies, by our own federal government? I mean, I was very happy to see Poland standing up. I mean, I ask this question every time I speak now, no, whether it's in New York or Pennsylvania. Where are all the men and strong women that built this country? Where does, where, why won't they stand up? There's very few of us. Do not let this cross the state line, folks. So, so I just want to up here and ask a question. I want to take a couple more, too. I want to just take a stack and then I want to hand it to, to Lab. Okay, so I've got this gentleman. Who else? And, okay, I want to get the, these two in the new. It doesn't matter where you are or what the industry 
says or anything else, and it happens, and it will continue to happen as long as they're out. And when they drill a well, they can contaminate water eight miles away. I wanted to point out too that um, you know, we're talking about the effects on the roads and how you know how bad that is, but also that the people that are being employed are not local people, and um, the crime rate of the people that are coming into our communities and it's going up, and um, uh, the rate of sexually transmitted diseases I've understood is, is gone way up because of the people that come in don't care about our communities, don't care about our people. Uh, but the, the other thing I wanted to say, like about the movie, it was beautiful. Um, I, I came here just because I have Polish ancestry and I wanted to just see, you know, the land and, and, and what a beautiful movie. Um, two, about two years ago, I'm not sure, but even three years ago, an acquaintance I had who's Polish, Polish citizen, told me about these, um, these reserves underneath Poland and that she, she was from um, Warsaw and she said that the citizens of Poland are concerned because of the history of Poland and how you know, everybody has taken over Poland at one point or another. And she said that they're concerned that because of this wealth and because of the economic problems in Europe, that they're afraid that you know there might be another world war and that Poland's going to be taken over again. Did you experience anything like that with the, the people that you spoke with? Thank you for the compliment. Um, I mean, this is a complicated issue, so let me break it down a little bit. The, um, there is a fear Poland buys a lot of uh, natural gas from Russia. And uh, the, 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 the countries north of Poland also have uh, natural gas. Not natural gas, but natural gas. And they're trying to make deals to get that gas, and there's, there's, there's economic issues involved here. But without getting into like, a lot of details here, the government, the official position of the government, whenever they talk about this, is that we must, they say, Poland, they say, we must become independent of Russia. And they use that technique to scare the people. It, it, it's false. It's not true. Um, I think that we have to sort of read, look at this whole this situation in a different kind of way. There is an economic crisis in the world, not just in, 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 uh, in Europe. There's a huge economic crisis, a bigger one here in, in the United States. That economic crisis is, is there for many reasons. And one of them is that it's, this economic crisis is connected to the gas, price of gas, and a lot of ecological issues are connected to it. I think that you know when we talk about shale gas, we have to think about it. why are they telling us that we need shale gas? Who who is telling you know? Is there a, you know did God come down and say in night in 2010 we need shale gas? They're telling us that because they want they're a corporation that want to make money with this with this product. But we have to say well listen if there is shale if that shale gas has been there for a long time. Perhaps it should be there for another 50 or 30 or whatever amount of years, and perhaps someday there will be a way to get it out safely. It may happen. There are they are doing experiments now to get to, to break up shale They're using electricity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're using different kind of chemicals. They're playing with it. And these companies know a lot about this, but they're not allowing this information to come out. The point is, is that we have to sort of redefine society and figure out how to make energy so that we can become, you know, more efficient and sufficient. Is we are now right now. Germany is now almost 100% self-sustaining uh, sustaining in terms of getting generating electrical energy, and this is pretty amazing. So there's ways that we can. I mean, these questions are. I, I can hear it. I can hear it from the audience. What do we do as citizens? Well, there's not much we can do because we are now. You know, we're we're, we're under the thumb of corporations. So the only thing we can do is get together little groups. And, and like in New York State, and start pushing, putting pressure on it. But there are places, and I think society is going in this direction. I've seen it in many places. There are places that are sacrificed zones. And what that means is that the powers are willing to sacrifice some places so that the, 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 the power centers, the places like New York or, or, or places where the wealthy live, can, you know, can have whatever they want. And they're going to sacrifice parts of Pennsylvania. They're going to sacrifice parts of New York State. We're going to sacrifice Haiti. We're going to sacrifice parts of Poland. This is going on all over the world, and we will be living. I mean, Chernobyl and Fukushima and all these places exist right now, and these are sacrifice zones because things were not planned properly. 
people believe what these corporations or what these governments are saying. We have to stop believing them, trusting them, and have to really redefine how we're going to govern ourselves. But we will continue to have suffering by ourselves. And this is just an unfortunate part of this equation. If the way that, you know, if, if everything is moving the way it's moving, do we need all these automobiles? Do we need all this kind of industry? We have to totally redefine our society. And I think that what's going to happen in the United States, and this is just my personal opinion, is America will balkanize. It will break up in sections. And these sections will become more autonomous. And they're going to have different rules and regulations. And some will be more sacrificed. It will be uh, have big, bigger sacrifices. Those, and some will be less. But I think this is the kind of power, the, the power that's going on, this kind of power that's going on. And, and Europe is a good example of that. They are willing to sacrifice Poland, as they, as they have many times, to get that energy and have a Poland be sacrificed for, for hundred fighting. It's a big part of the country. So that's all I can say about that. So, I saw Vera, and I want to let this gentleman who's been waiting very patiently get a couple more in. So, if, Jim, do you think you can get to Vera? He was waiting also. I just want to say that the movie inspires me to show that the little people can win. The Polish people, they got together, they brought their machinery, and they were able to stop the corporations. So we can do it. We can do it. We don't have to have all the money in the world. We can also stop the corporate machine, just like the Polish people did. So that's the example for us, plus the way New York is. New York has closed their borders for five years. And we need to focus on alternatives. The alternatives, what was being had, what's being done in Germany, as Lex says. I had a German journalist here the other day, and he said that they're working and they're exploring the possibility of getting solar power from the Sahara Desert. So the Sahara Desert from northern Africa, there's so much sun there, and bring that all the way up into Europe, and you can you can energize the whole planet without fossil fuel. It can be done if we get the corporate machine out of the picture. Right. And I just want to take a moment right now and really thank our friends from Pennsylvania for coming down here, helping answer questions. <laughs>
So those are my thoughts and my <laughs> questions and my curiosities. And thank you for a great film. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, look, there are a lot of things. I want just throw out a few things that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, the, Amer the Polish government is very similar, to, uh, <laughs> almost the same, identical to the American government. In other words, money talks. The corporations have a huge amount of power, and they came in and they made deals because the way things work in Poland is that the government has to agree and then licenses, licenses the mineral rights, and they license these mineral rights to these corporations. So these deals were made behind people's backs. No one voted on this thing the way they didn't vote in Pennsylvania. It's the same thing. It's no different. A huge lobby in America, in Poland is, well, there's a lot of American lobbies that are working there all the time. And they, have, and they work on behalf of these, uh, on, on these, uh, these corporations. And, and um, you have to understand that America has a huge influence on, on Poland, as it does in a lot of other countries. And the influence is basically an economic influence because of you know, selling and buying goods, all that, all that kind of stuff. So, so it's very transparent why this deal was made in Poland. Is that, if anybody else wants to answer anything else, but that's, that's, that's the easy answer. Because if we, you know what happens? If, if, if you complicate things too much, people get lost, especially in a film like this. If you put all the details in there, after a while, you know, it's too much. If you want information, you can find the, find the information on the internet. The point of the film is to show the struggle and show the bigger issues. If you get into a lot of details and get lost in the, in the details, and then people lose interest, you need an energy. You know? I mean, corporations know this very well. You know, they come in, they simplify things to the simplest kind of, uh, you know, mathematical formula, and they start hitting people over and over the same way over and over again until they get the uh, point across. They don't make things that complicated unless it works in their favor. And they figure out, don't forget these energy companies have been doing this for 100 years. They know the contracts, they know how to do this stuff. They went to Poland, they thought Poland was going to be an easy mark, and it's not, because we got together. So, um, and I'd like to speak. Um, I was, we, I and a number of other actors managed to corner Cuomo in 2010 during his uh, campaign uh, in Ithaca. And uh, we had him surrounded, and he was not able to escape. He was turning this way, that, the other way, and, and smiling. And uh, he said, and I quote, in my administration, all watersheds will be sacrosanct. Obviously, his comments since have indicated that that is not his, has not been his chief concern. But the media has been very compliant in that they've never held him to that that comment, they, they never piped up with reminding the public that he said that. Later, he tried to kick me out of a meeting, a Democrat meeting in, uh, in Sherbourne, and he, later I, I got a chance to speak to him anyway, and he said, uh, what's wrong with waiting for the EPA study? Well, he hasn't been concerned with waiting for the EPA study since. The only thing that stopped him has been political opposition, and uh, and I think we've done a very good job of that. Yes. And I think that also uh, continued political opposition will continue to uh, slow them down. Also, I think lawsuits, uh, lawsuits are coming out um, that are costing the industry additional monies. The, the, the gas prices are staying low, and uh, and then alternative energy, renewable energy, deep energy retrofits. Um, houses can be built now that are so well insulated that, that that they become zero net energy users. So they're 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 in fact if they put uh, uh, solar arrays on them, they can produce more energy than they use. So. This is this whole shield gas is just so unnecessary. Our political leaders should be responding to our problems at hand right now. Right. right. So I, I see. I'll carry it for you. I want to let this this let me get into that. I just want to mention this. It sounds simplified, but uh, I've talked to a lot of people around the community. Absolutely. And those people down there, I know up on a 
out. There's many a day in the summertime. I look out in the morning and it's, you can call it fog if you want. To me, it's more smog. And they're breathing. And whatever we get stuck with, they're going to be breathing just like me. And if we can get more of these people that just have a little place downtown and they don't think they have to be interested, if we can just get them interested, they'd make a big impact. We should check because I'm trying to, I live in the city of Bennington and I'm working on trying to do some outreach there. And, I mean, part of the thing is in the city, we're sitting in a valley and it's our air. It's our air it's thick. And I think that's going to be. I think that's, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's a separation too. And Ray's got something else. Also, what you got to think about the water. Okay, is no, it's not just Bennington, the whole town, Pennsylvania, all state, New York. You can think globally. This is the whole planet. It's Mother Earth. The water that is being taken out of the rivers for fracking cannot be put back into the cycle of life of the planet. That water is gone forever. It will no longer be rain. Nothing. It's gone. No. All right. So it's right now we're past ten. I'm. I'm not had dinner yet. So I want to take, uh, I saw Gary had one. Does anyone else have one final question that we'll call a night? Just one observation. If okay. the sewage going into a septic tank, it does go back into the uh, hydrologic sphere. Right. Fracking does not. You're absolutely right. It's gone forever. Okay. So Gary, and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a night here. Can I just, just say one thing? So before we all leave, everyone, thank you so, so much for coming. The people who stuck it out for a long QA, I want to let them like, get a last word in here. And one, one more quick thing. If you feel so compelled to be happy, please consider kicking in a couple bucks towards like uh, travel expenses and things and equipment. Thank you. I just want to say there's not many people left here because it's late, but I just want to say thank you, Isaac. We need young people. There are not that many young people here, but we really need young people working here and, you know, and make, becoming part of the struggle. A lot of young people were involved in public in, 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 in helping those, those farmers that we saw. The children, their, their girlfriends, boyfriends were working behind the scenes. They were out in the film, but a lot of young people were involved in, in the struggle. So thank you very much for your help. I'm a paid agitator. I'm a paid agitator. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I was called in the moderator. There, there was a ton of work on, on behind the scenes, so thank you to those certain individuals who really did a ton of work in terms of publicity. Uh, the real, I did not have a lot to make this happen. There are a couple of people who really, really pulled the weight on this. So, Brett? So, does Ian Solar pay your weight? I'm not going to answer that. All right, so uh, Gary, and then we'll call it a day. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, like during the film, you got one of the gas company employees who admit eventually wore up water with the perk up for 80 to 50 years, I think, because he had the shoes. Um, the American Petroleum Institute's propaganda right now, and I listened to their state representative last week, said that this can't possibly happen. Anywhere because of Darcy's law, and they're basing everything on Darcy's law that this, this water, this polluted water, won't work up. And to the segue, you're, you're, you're talking about young people, 30 or 50 years, it will affect them. Have you heard of that? Yeah. All right, so like, right? All right, that's right. Um, on the water coming back up out of the well, I use one particular well across the street. Two marine tanks on site and a production unit because the water still comes up, the truck comes in once a month and takes the flow back water out of those tanks every month. And that well went online in 2008. And here we are now in 2013. The water is still coming up. So don't believe the problem is it will come up. I've got this from several company men and three of the top drillers of the industry. Companies I know personally, I told them the same thing. And those drillers are the ones that turn out told me when they drill a hole in the ground, they will contaminate the eight miles away. Right? Hmm. I mean, look, uh, my best answer for this is this is that I have a friend of mine who lives in Holland. He works, uh, he's a rock and roll guy, 
He's around 65 years old, and he owns a company that does seismic testing. He's been working for the industry for a long time, and we've been communicating. He was one of my main sources of, of inf inside information, and you know he doesn't want to disclose his name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He's the name of his, of his company uh, because he's afraid. But he told me, and he's written me emails about this. He's, he works for the industry. He said it's not safe. It shouldn't be done, and that it's a a miscarriage of 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 of, 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 of uh, it, the, the business behind it is a lie. Essentially, the, from his point of view, is that this is a way to keep making money. Not from the fracking necessarily, but from the infrastructure that they do. There's a lot of money being invested and put into this thing. And it's money to actually, they're, they're, generally, they're, they're creating action in order to make money. And they're making money from building things, from the trucks they have to buy and rent and all that kind of stuff. That's where the money is being used. And there, there's not much money being made from actual gas. So that's what he said. I don't know what else to say. I'm not, I'm not a technical person, I'm not an expert, but this is somebody from the fracking industry who told me this. Um, so everyone, I, I guess we'll close here. I'm sure some of us will stick around for a minute. Thank you so, so much, everyone, for coming in. Thank you for a lot of time I have really good questions. I really do appreciate it. It's, you know, this is my dialogue, so I'm sure all of us are happy to chat. Everyone have a really good night. Safe travels. Good Final destination. Take care.